Hey everyone, Fwip here, and today I want to talk about how I build in Minecraft. Now this is not meant to be a tutorial video, but more on how I build inside the game. The concepts I follow when I'm building, what I think about when I'm going through the building process, and all of that stuff. Everything that fits into that bubble. I have been playing Minecraft for almost eight years at this point, and I've been uploading YouTube videos for about four of them. And I gotta say, recently I've been going back and looking at some of my old builds and whoo, they were rough everybody. They were rough. For me, I tend to stick to medieval or fantasy focused builds. That's just what I tend to enjoy. That doesn't mean that's the only way to build inside of the game, but that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Over the years, I built things from the ancient monastery you just saw, which was in a video I uploaded four years ago, to castles, to entire cities, to even mountain ranges. Well, half of a mountain range, I guess. At this point, I'm very happy to say that I think I can look at any build that I have done at any point in time and know it's something that I created and then it's in my own build style. I'm very happy to be able to say that. So let's talk about what that is. Recently, I've been focusing more so on the shapes of structures and making that look visually appealing as if I was building a silhouette of a structure inside of Minecraft. If you took all of the textures away and just used a single block, would it still look interesting? And that is exactly what I wanna be making here. Here behind me, you can see Castle Bleakrock, one of the old builds I've done. And if we whip ourselves around here, you can see all of the old style of texturing I used to do where it's all just everything, everything everywhere. It's very, very busy. There's a lot of stuff going on with it. Even inside of the roof, there are things going on. Now let's look at something I've done more recently that I am extremely proud of. We're here in my hardcore world. If you wanna see the new survival action I've been going for, we've been doing some amazing building things around here and I am in love with it. Most importantly, this view of the windmill right here, this mega tiger biome we are in. But what I wanna focus on is the windmill itself because look how smooth this is. We have a little bit of a bump out right there around the window that we have. The windmill blade itself has a lot of interesting depth to it and it's not chaotic with textures everywhere. You can see in the terrain variation that I have below it in the cliffside, in the hills and the rocks, that's where we have a lot of the messy stuff. But in the build structure itself, it's very toned back and tame, but everything that I'm using to add detail to it also adds to the shape of the structure. Now to make things really easy for ourselves over here, I brought ourselves into my super flat testing world. You can see a lot of the build designs I've attempted or used, mostly attempted, inside of my world throughout the last few years. And well, my friends, today we're gonna be looking at something very, very simple, being this orange concrete box and this house right over here. As you can see, this is something that I'd consider a very generic Minecraft starter house. You use some logs on the corners, you bring it up, you just kind of peek it into the middle, and then this is literally just stairs, full block stairs, and coming all the way to the top, you turn the stair in like that. And that is about as generic of a Minecraft house as you can get without just having a flat roof. Speaking of a flat roof, we've got the orange guy right over here. Now, as I was talking about the silhouette idea, that's what I wanna move forward with talking about today. So how can we make this orange box right here more interesting? Well, step one obviously can be adding the roof. So we have, this is say like five blocks up on here and we wanna bring that up. So we bring it up another one, bring it up by two, and then we bring it up by one and we go like this. And that gives us a little bit more interest here. That's cool, that's great, but it's still just flat lines everywhere. It's still rather boring. So how can we make this more interesting? Well, say instead of right over on this original one, we had the door right here. What if instead of just having the door being in the flat face of this wall, we give ourselves a little bit of a bump right in here. So you bring this up, you can have your doorway walking through right there, that's totally fine. And then you bring in another wall or another roof section that's gonna bring yourselves all the way up like this. That breaks it up right there, and then you have a spot to throw in a window right in there if you'd really like to. You don't need to, but you know there's that spot if you want it. To me, that's still not enough. That's still very flat. This is one face over here that's taken care of, and say we can come in here and add a little bit of like an extended out bit, and we can have like this can be a window looking into the house. So we got a window up here, we've got a window right in there, and we've got a doorway. That's pretty great, that's nice, it's pretty, it's perfect. We can bring a window in there, you got your threes. 
Working on threes is a great way to go. Threes, sixes, nines, that stuff. It's very easy way to detail things. So this is cool in here. That's all interesting and whatnot. Now, what if we want to extend this out? What if we want to outgrow our five wide by seven long interior space inside of this? What can we do in that case to make it more interesting and give ourselves some more functional space? Well, in that case, we could bring ourselves over here, extending this stuff out right in here like this, and then we can open up this entire section. That gives us the opportunity to have something in here like I did on my starter house way long ago, right back in there, where we kind of did that smooth sandstone side for the hardcore starter house. But in this case, let's go and make it a little different. Instead of having the roof going out straight and continuing onwards, you can always just have a different angle to the roof. That adds more interest as well. Instead of having so many lines going, so many strong horizontal lines throughout the structure, we now have one that's really breaking that face up that's not so interesting anymore, or not so boring anymore. It's more interesting now, which is the point. Then coming around to the back side of this one, obviously still pretty boring over here. We could do that same thing we did on the front and add in the double the window right in here. And maybe you want to add in another one right in there. That could work out great. And now you have McDonald's Happy Meal. But we don't want to settle for Happy Meals here. We want to make something a lot more interesting. So what if in this case, you could go really simple here and you could extend a chimney coming up and just have that moving all the way it's up in here. And then you do something like that. That's cool for one. That's a great way to do it. But what if we brought a tower into here? Something that you can have a bedroom in on the upper floor of your house say you're playing in survival sometimes we don't have the opportunity to sleep on the ground floor because mobs are sitting right outside of our house where that block is and then you know it says monsters are too close you can't sleep in your bed so for a tower design all we really need to do is bring everything up like this and that'll actually meet us right in the middle of this entire place what I would say is give yourselves two blocks taller than the peak of the roof because then we're going to add some more interesting bits onto the tower itself and then you want to bring out this little area, box it out so you actually have some good mobile space in the middle. And you can actually add another little peg here in the corners. And then adding a little bit more extra detail onto the top one. I know I skipped a lot of steps here, but we have a bit of a tower roof for ourselves. We haven't even added any windows or anything onto the tower, but the shape is already, we had that. That was basically what we started with here. And now it's a million times more interesting. We haven't even added overhanging bits onto the roof. So in reality, it would stretch out something like this. So that has more interest to it as well. And bam, now it actually feels like something that has interest to it. It has more reason for us to want to explore it. But this right here is how I've been building a lot of things in Minecraft. As I mentioned earlier, we could add a chimney, which I feel like is something useful to add. I was joking about doing it right there. And now realistically looking at this build, I would honestly bring ourselves in. We have a doorway that you'd walk inside right in here. And if you think about functional space that so you'd wanna be able to move around in inside of your survival base to access everything, it's probably something like those blocks right there. We want to be able to move on top of something along that line. And then back in here, we actually have space for a tower. So you think about it and you can have something like this and then your staircase goes up your tower right like in there. You'd have a whole ceiling right in here and a second floor inside this. So you'd have the tower staircase inside of that place. And then here you can have your chest. You can have everything you want. You have your bedroom up above. But realistically, you've got this space for yourself. So if we think about it, the fireplace probably would need to be something right in here. So the fireplace itself would occupy something like this. And then it would go all the way up this row and it's pretty perfect right in here. The only thing I would say is weird about this one is right now it's right there. We have this thing right in here. There's no real reason for that to be in that exact same spot for that window. So I'm gonna move it over one just to have that more interest. So it's not just straight right in here because this window down below is already in line with it. And we don't want to have these consistencies all throughout. That'd be weird if it's one, two, and three in a straight line. You wanna have three creating like triangles. Triangles are good. I like triangles. Now, my friends, is the favorite part of every art tutorial you ever have followed. We have step one, we have step two, and now we have step three of build the rest of the flipping house. So let's go ahead and kick this off in a good old-fashioned time-lapse mode, and I'll show you all what the final product of this guy could look like. I decided to go with a more familiar and basic color palette on this one, being a stripped dark oak logs, then with some diorite and white concrete, then using some oak wood off to the sides here, and then dark oak on the roofs. And the way that I added the slabs into the side of that one was just to have a different shape in the slope than the upper area. As you can see, I brought all dark oak in here, D realized I didn't like the stairs and planks and everything being all over, so I decided to bring in gray concrete and gray wool, which I thought was really cool, then just kind of did that around 
around the edges there. And then of course, coming back in here for the tower as we're copying the exact same shape we had before. I didn't want to add much to it outside of adding in stairs and slabs to smooth out those full blocks in places. You can see the general palette that we have right here. Just simply doing that right there alone. Took me about 15 minutes to do and the entire build looks a million times better than what we had previously with just the orange concrete. And I absolutely love it. And then finally coming in here and throwing in a brick chimney to add a bit of contrast to it, it is finished. And there we have it, my friends, the finished transformation of how I build things in this freaking game called Minecraft, right? It's pretty cool, though. I absolutely love this little build over here. You can see on the front, add in the wheat field, let that thing grow up and add a small little bit of vineyard of sorts. And a great way to decorate builds if you do them in Super Flat World or anything like that is to add a mix of oak trees and spruce trees behind them. It's very cheap and easy way of just dot a few saplings around and let them grow up to whatever the heck they're going to be. But I did the whole interior on this place as well, and I really like it. I think I'm going to extend that out right there so it's just not as flat as it was beforehand. But a few things we can pick up from the outside of this area, sometimes underneath where we stairs come down to where we have these beams being the stripped dark oak log, you can see I included some dark oak fences. I also kind of include that along these areas as well. Uh, wherever I had the window back in this point, I brought this section up one, and I could actually come back in here. No, just kidding. I can't do that. What I could do is come back in here and do something like this, and then that'll help to slope it up there as well. We're Works better with spruce because the colors match up exactly, but it's a general idea. The fireplace that we have here, we had a chimney coming up and I wanted to have two points of smoke coming out. So I've learned this from, from Pearl a long time ago and it's just having these two alternate ones at different heights. Campfire in there, surround it by your trap doors and put a wall on top. One other thing to note is if you are trying to build a fortified building out of stones and you want the stone aspect of it to come through, on top of any doorways or windows that you do, add in a polished andesite or add in a polished block of some sort, whatever is gonna be like your fortifying block. Include that above the windows and things and it can help kind of sell the idea of that. Into the interior now, I actually did go ahead and decorate this one. So here in the front entry hall, I like to add a clock now. I designed this as if it would be a beginner starter house of sorts. So I had a clock here in the front because you can't really see the daytime going out this door. So it's always nice to know if you're walking out into a creeper or not. That's helped me a lot in the hardcore world. Then over here, we've got a little bit of a section trying to use a lot of barrels for storage of goods. And if you are having villagers inside of your locations, adding in barrels on these upper levels actually makes it so they can't get that as a profession block. As I want to make this look like a cooking fire in a kitchen of sorts, I went with the smoker over here. But what you can also do is add in some furnaces in the floor, floor below it. So it looks like you're having some stones in front of the fire. So you're not trying to burn your wooden floors. Kind of a cool little bit in there. Added some bookshelves. Crafting table, of course, is very much needed then turn this into a little bit of a bre breakfast nook for ourselves and it's so adorable then on these open frames that we had like this so it's not just a bare wall leading all the way in and revealing all of that stuff brought in some of our spruce trap doors just as a way to cover it up and hide things down here and I really like the result that that gives but coming into here as well using that polished andesite at the top leading into what is more or less our starter storage room at this point we got a lot more barrels in here we've got some double chests for the bulk resources coming up to the next layer we've got another barrel very very skinny staircase going all the way up this guy then inside of here we actually get into our bedroom which, let me flip that up here. We've got our first set of iron armor. I get sentimental about those things. I like to keep them. Then I threw an ender chest over here, another chest right in there. So maybe your valuables, your extra armor, your first wooden pickaxe you haven't put up on the wall yet. And then your bed, of course, with an easy way of accessing it via flipping down this trap door, you can actually get into your bed. Just kidding, flip down that trap door and you can instantly teleport up there. So if it's really late at night, you're trying to run in, you can run into the kitchen and jump up through the floor to your bed. I know, it makes a lot of sense. Up at this top floor, however, I turned this into a bit of an enchanting and brewing setup area. Obviously nowhere to store anything really up here. You could add some chests where these are or on top of those if you'd like. But one thing I wanted to note is typically when I make my towers very, very pointy like I do, I don't occupy all of the space above here. It is 100% okay to come through and be like, you know what? I'm not going to use anything above this layer. I just want a little bit of a roof in here. So I'm going to round that off and not go all the way up to the top. It is 100% okay to do that. Further rounding it off has brought in a few trapdoors on there because I can't stop tweaking things. It's great. But that, my friends, is how we took the shape idea of what we developed for this house right over here and turned that exact same thing into this design right here. I do hope this was helpful for you. I do hope this was able to answer answer a few questions about how I build in Minecraft. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Any other questions y'all might have on this stuff, that would be absolutely awesome. But that's it for me today. Click that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you are brand new. And my friends, I will catch you on the flip side.